am I going back and forth? So hopefully you can hear me all right this time. Um, welcome to sunny Florida. We're doing the Mega Demo Live, of course. That's the fun things about Mega Demo. And it is slow cooking. So have a look. I'm going to do maybe, we'll see how many times. Well, it's slow cooking, but on fast, all right? So um, I'm going to do as many recipes as I can get through. I'm going to show you some. I'm going to explain them. Um, and they will be all posted in the back office later today. So very, very exciting. Um, some specials for you, some joining specials. Those of you who are considering looking at your inspiration at home to join this fabulous business, both in, our, in, in all of our seven countries globally. Uh, we have some specials that will be there available till the end of Sunday, Brisbane time at 10 p.m. We also have some host specials. Those of you who are hosting live mega demos, uh, we welcome you. And we also have some guest specials, and I'll go through those all, a little bit later. So if you're not sure who I am, I'm Colleen Walters, the founder, um, Spice Curator, and uh, CEO of Your Inspiration at Home. And I'm going to preface it, I'm not a cook. <laughs> I, love to, I love to eat great food, but I am not the master chef in the group. I know a lot of you are going to be going, how is she doing this? Why is she doing this? Because I love great flavor. Um, I love flavors from around the world. And I'm just not the very best cook in the world. So I love slow cookers. Any of you busy out there? Um, certainly if you're following my travels around the world, you know how busy I am. So this is one of my favorite ways to cook. So have a look at all the different slow cookers we have here. Uh, these are great for, um, you know, if you're doing entertaining, you can do the three. I'm using this one for sometimes desserts. Um, this one for more appetizers or small meals. And of course, these ones for the ones that I'm going to put in the freezer. Um, or I want multiple, um, I have lots of guests or I want to um, have leftovers. So um, I think we have, uh, I think it's 11 or 12 slow cookers going here as well, all different brands. So first thing, whenever you're cooking, you need a drink, right? Australia? Okay. Come on over here. Who knew you could do slow cooking for um, drinks? So what I've got here is a mulled, caramelized, um, a caramelized mulled apple cider. So a beautiful pure apple cider. It also has orange juice um, as well. Let me just find my glass. Um, it, uh, I caramelized a little bit of um, sh sugar with some, I've just thrown in the um, mulling spice, not in a tea bag, all right? So you can strain it, I don't have time, it's TV, live TV, so I don't have time to strain it right now, but I do have time to drink it, and this is gorgeous. So what this is, is a mulled but caramelized um, type um, with butter and sugar. Um, I caramelized it on the pan. I'll give you the recipe, but it's vanilla sugar, um, a little bit of water, and um, butter. And just caramelize that, uh, mix it in with the hot cider and the mulled, um, mulling spice, and um, a little bit of orange juice as well. So there you go. Mmm, amazing. But you know what? I think it needs something else. I'm going to share that in a minute. So over here, what I've done, and this is gorgeous. Um, it's a tea. So we, I've used our Hawaiian hibiscus tea in, a, you can see it here, in a um, tea sack. And of course, you can use a tea bowl or you can leave it out. Um, I prefer in this one to put it into some type of container, tea bowl or tea sack. Um, so I've just been letting that um, sit for about two hours. Uh, some lemon, um, bag of mixed berries, frozen mixed berries, uh, and some lemon, lemon aid. Now, those of you from Australia, that means freshly squeezed lemon juice um, with some sugar in there. And um, that's how you make this wonderful berry, hot berry drink. For those of you uh, are on the eastern seaboard, I'm sure you're looking for something this right now. All right, let's go back over. Um, those recipes will be out later, but um, great, great way to serve a hot malt um, or tea for the holidays. 
Come on over here. Let's get going here. Oh, right. The missing ingredients? Well, you can make this into a hot toddy with a little splash of a wonderful dark spiced rum. All right, now I'm set. <laughs> Cheers, mates in Australia. All right. Now the first um, actual recipe I'm going to do is going to start with some appetizers. I'm going to show you the finished product over here. Over here. And what this is, is it's a salsa cheesecake. Isn't that gorgeous? So you just simply slice it off and add it to your chip and you eat it like that. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I've just topped it with a little bit of a salsa as well. So come on over here, I'll show you how to make it. Now, this is done in the slow cooker, if you can believe it. So what you do is you take your um, salsa. Now, I've just made a Your Inspiration at Home salsa with fresh diced tomatoes, or tomatoes in Australia, um, and a couple of tablespoons of our salsa, or teaspoons of our salsa mix. So this is um, roughly a half a cup um, of salsa, and I'm just going to put this in. All right. Now you can pre-blend it if you like, but because I only want to do the blending once because it's going to be very noisy, I'm just going to chuck it all in. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of flour. So about a teaspoon of flour. Where's my, I'll get a clean one. Sorry, a tablespoon of flour. I have right here and what you want to do is you also want to whip up some egg you want it to be nice and light so one egg and one egg white showing my skills on TV as we go here oops there we go it's like I said disaster chef all right, now just whip that up. I made these earlier today because what they do need to do is set a little bit in the fridge after they've cooked. Okay, just whip that in there. Now, I am going to pour it all in, but normally what you would do is you would um, cream the cheese um, to get it, the, the cream cheese. You've got two blocks of cream cheese. You've got your, um, oh, I need to plug that in. You've got your salsa prepared earlier. There we go. Now you're just going to move that up. There we go. Oh, quite a bit. Um, okay. Now I'm just going to pretend that I finished that. And then what you do is, you can do this beforehand if you want to prepare your pan earlier. So what I've got is a mini springform pan. This recipe does one seven inch um, springform pan. So I'm using coconut um, oil to spray it. Just a light spray there. Some breadcrumbs. Just to give it a little bit of a base. Um, you can also, what I did in mine today, is I also put in the fajita mix right in that, um, in the, with the cream cheese as well. So fajita and salsa in the cream cheese mix. Then I would um, spoon my cream cheese in here. That's, um, oh no, sorry, I'm going to put some, I'm going to also add, once I've mixed it all in nicely, I'm going to add um, some blended and they call it Mexican cheese here in the US um, so it's, it's a unique blend here I'm not sure that you can find the same cheeses in Australia but certainly a cheddar cheese um, would go lovely in there so you toss that in you spoon it you mix it together just by spoon and then you would put it in your spring form pan so happened to have one that I prepared a little earlier. In the bottom of the springform pan, you want to put um, some tin foil at the bottom, some alfoil in Australia, 
um, because what we're going to do is for now we're going to put this in the slow cooker. I know, pretty cool. So we'll come over here. So here's the slow cooker. Now what I've done is I put a ramekin at the bottom of the slow cooker. I'm going to fill the slow cooker with some hot water. Not fill, but up to the bottom of the ramekin because really what we're doing is we're steam cooking this. All right, so hot water goes there. Set this on top, just like that. Pop this here. And we're going to turn it, I believe it is to low. Uh, no, I'm going to guess high for one hour and three quarters. I will just double check the recipe, but I believe it's one hour and three quarters. I'm going to set it on high. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to take it out at that, or take the lid off at that point. Run a knife around, um, it looks like a souffle, it's really cool, it comes up, it's going to sink, don't worry. When you take the lid off, it just goes whoosh, down. Um, but I'm going to run a, a, a bread knife around there just to loosen the sides up, cover it with tin foil, and pop it in the fridge to set. Um, first you need to let it cool down. So you're going to leave this open for 30 minutes or so to, cool, to um, settle down, put it on a... Um, Wrap to cool when it's cool to touch. I wrap it in tin foil, put it in the fridge, let it set for two to three hours. Is all I did um, with that, and that's how it looks um, when it's finished. Okay, here's one I prepared a little earlier. So all different stages of this one. So I'm just running it across there, taking that off, popping this out. Now you can put it with these I find they come off really nicely so I don't need to leave the tin um, in on the plate. I know every time I slice them and that's it. Isn't that great? A new way to serve our salsa in a fantastic savory cheesecake. All right. So how about the first special? Ready for the first special? Let me find my notes. Okay. The first mega special is the Creole. Hmm, we're going to use that one a little bit later in jambalaya. The Indonesian rendang. I made an incredible beef uh, Indonesian rendang. And the capsicum pesto. And those are all at 25% off in one a pack. So you get the Creole, the Indo, Indo rendang, um, which is, a, I better say this for those people who are not familiar with our company. Let's go backwards. Louisiana Creole Dip Mix, <laughs> Indonesian Rendang Spice Blend, and the Capsicum Pesto Dip Mix, which I'm going to use all three of these um, a little bit later. Now, these are all 25% off. And as hostesses or hosts today, you get a further 50% off the already marked down price for the pack. They are available online right now, and they're available until 10 p.m. Brisbane time um, on Sunday. So you have till the end of uh, Sunday to close off those shows. The second pack, um, I'll go through a little bit later. I'm not going to reveal all the surprises at once. Okay, yum. I think it's time for another of my caramelized mulling spice. Mm. All right. Let's clean up some of this mess so I have room for the next one. Okay, then we're going to go on to soups. It'll take a little while to do. And that soup is a basically a Mexican style bean soup. All right, um, yeah, style. Now what I've done is I've also, okay, come on over here. Um, so I've done the soup. I, what I did was I took the beans. Isn't this lovely? So this is a bit for Christmas. So I've taken heritage beans, but um, I'll give you the recipe for about three or four different types of beans. You can layer them in there. They look nice. Um, some sun-dried tomatoes, not in oil. You can see them in there. And then what I've done is I've mixed um, fajita, guacamole, and country onion together. And that is the soup um, the soup spice. I've also tucked in a couple of um, bouillon, you've got to use bouillon cubes, uh, I've used a couple of bouillon, um, chicken bouillon um, sachets or sachets, 
um, liquid, and I've just, um, they're sealed in there, and a great, great gift. Now what you would do is obviously write the recipe down on the back of the card. So what, to make a bean soup, of course you need to let the beans soak, so um, put them in the pot, um, I'll give you the recipe as well. Um, for about 10 minutes, you want to bring them to a boil, and then I just let them sit overnight. That was the easiest thing for me. Let them sit overnight. Um, you know, they need to be rinsed um, before you let them sit overnight. So you want to just get all the gases off. Then you can add whatever vegetables you want. If you can find dry, dry vegetables, you can put the dry vegetables in here as well, which would be great. Um, for a soup base to have that already ready. If not, I've just used celery and kernel corn um, and some carrots in there. So really quick and easy uh, as far as prep time. And then it is about um, six hours to eight hours on a low temperature uh, using a four to five quart um, crock pot. All right, now you can serve it with um, obviously uh, wraps, you can serve it with um, bread, and it freezes really, really well. All right. Okay. Now those two go great together. You can see the um, salsa cheesecake and the Mexican bean soup. Now the other soup I have um, is partially ready. Okay, it's not fully ready because I want to show you um, the, the rest of the preparation. So this one is chicken mulligatani soup. Now chicken mulligatani is, um, for those of you, I think, the, I think our American friends um, enjoy this one as well. Uh, the history is from uh, really a lot of British and Commonwealth um, countries is the history for mulligatani. It's actually not a true Indian soup. It's a variation of um, what they would call pepper broth or pepper, like a pepper broth um, is the literal translation in India. So when um, the Australians, the British, the Canadians were overseas in India, this became one of the favorite soups. Uh, so chopped celery, carrots, onions, um, and a Granny Smith apple. That is one of the things that makes this soup unique. It is must have the Granny Smith apple. You can use chicken. So all I've done is, let me give you the recipe here, a cup of celery, all chopped fine, a cup of carrots, cup of, or sorry, um, three quarter cup, uh, basically one Granny Smith if it's a big one, apple chopped fine, and um, six cups of, I've used organic um, chicken stock, two cups of water, and then what you do is you four hours on low, okay? Um, that's all part of uh, getting it ready ahead of time. Then uh, what you do is you get a plastic bag, and I'm going to put in, where's my flour? Here we are. That's the long one. Now I like to have a really nice thick, so I'm going to put a couple of heaping tablespoons. I'm going to put a teaspoon and a half of the Madras curry, as you average person. Okay. I'm going to shake that up or stir that up to mix it up. As you can tell, I'm, you know, I'm a quick and easy chef. I want it just done. And something I prepared a little bit earlier. I'll move these tongs for this. Just so I don't have to wash my hands all the time. So some chicken pieces, about a pound, um, 500 grams. For those of you in Australia. A little more, I think. So, um, and the Australian way, um, and uh, they like to add a few more things uh, in there than just the basics uh, here. Um, to marinate, or sorry, to um, coat until you need it again, all right? So you can do that right at the very beginning of your prep, and all your prep work is done. Do is just simply um, fry it off, all right? Just get it nice and brown and then pop it into 
the um, slow cooker. And that's what we have going here. Now you want to pop it into the slow cooker for about an hour. I hope you guys can have smell a vision there because um, Kylie Elms, this is amazing. All right. I know that you, and, and Sue Walsh, you guys are hoping. And you can see it's just, just in that um, softening stage and there's the chicken. Now what I've also done is I've thrown a cup of rice in there. Now what I'll do at the very end of the Malakatani soup when it's 100% ready, um, I'm going to throw a can of coconut uh, milk in there. I'm sorry, about an hour with the coconut milk and then it will um, thicken and be a lovely um, soup. And of course we've got, oh, we've, all right. Here, you want to look at this while I get everything else ready? We're just better. All right, the fun of doing a demo yourself. <laughs> okay, where are my directors when I need them? Okay. All right. Let's the next pack that's 25% off is the fajita spice, the mulling spice, and the pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie, that's 25% off. Hostesses get an additional 50% off. And if you're thinking of joining your inspiration at home today, you probably want to take advantage of this. You get it. Um, that's one of our favorite things to do at the Mega Demos is give you that extra free product. Um, you may have the same. You may have that product in your kit, so it's a great hostess. It is a great time to join. All right, the next one. Ah, a risotto. Beautiful. Let's come and look what the finished product looks like. Um, what I've used though is not your typical. Arborio rice, I've used farro. And um, what farro is, is uh, another ancient grain. It's a Middle Eastern grain, but what it is, it's softer and it's it's used widely in Italy. This is, an, in fact, um, an Italian pearled farro uh, used widely in Italy. So it's, as you can see, it's a, it's a grain, it looks like uh, wheat. All right. Um, and um, but it, it's very soft like a boreal rice, which is absolutely fantastic for soaking in the flavors, soaking up the um, chicken stock style risotto. All right. Now we're going to do shrimp and tomato risotto. One of my favorite new tools. I can't open it. I can use. Now those of you at boot camp, I'm not sure whatever it is. Um, you'll be very proud of my new skills of the can. Now well, this is a, a fun can opener to use. Um, go like this, like this, and you just lift it up. All right. So we're going to use the recipe um, online. So I'm doing a half recipe because I am doing a small slow cooker. If you're going to do this one. A full recipe use at, at the same as this one of Fortis. And then I've already pre um, sliced some leeks and some fennel. So let me just grab those. Okay, pre done leeks and fennel um, going in there. Do the work ahead of time. All right. Um, now, two cups sparrow rinsed, that's what this is. So I've already rinsed it. And the reason you rinse it really is um, in case there's any husks on the outside um, remaining. So that's really just, they'll float to the surface um, and you just drain it. So I'm just gonna dump that in there. Um, your normal arborio rice. All right. Then into that go full, um, um, amount. Actually, no, I am. Sorry. <laughs> I am doing the full amount of this one. Um, is a cup and a half of the chicken stock. Okay. There we go. Again, for those famous boot camp attendees, 
watch the scales on this fabulous, and I will um, say it, uh, Tupperware um, as well. There you go. Great product that even I can use. All right. And then a little earlier, a couple tables of tomato paste, tablespoons there. And then you want to just stir that in. You don't want to um, stir this. You just want to break up that tomato paste. And you're wondering, what EI of product am I putting in here? Well, I have a choice. Um, the, my things that I would recommend would be capsicum pesto, uh, which is the one I've done. Um, you could use herb and garlic, would be beautiful, or our risotto blend. So where is my capsicum pesto? There it is behind my drink. Hmm, that's a cute. All right. And I'll put a couple of um, tablespoons, heaping tablespoons. Now, Tuscan capsicum pesto, onion, garlic, um, oregano, basil. Is that oregano? I can't remember now. Basil um, in Australia. All right. Just give that a stir. Now I'm going to pop that into the slow cooker and I'm going to cook that on a pie for two hours. And one of the things, because it is a risotto um, style, you, wanna, you want to um, stir that every 30 minutes just to make sure it's absorbed. Okay, on high for two hours. Oh, one thing I forgot to do on that is put, um, steaming you want to keep all that moisture in there because you'll notice there's quite a bit of moisture lost in that um, at the end of the stuff of paper towel usually I had one prepared earlier but that's gone so you just want to put some paper towel on the top there um, to keep that moisture in um, so there we go okay well, we're finished with that one. So now we're going to go. Where is it? I got a half an hour. I could keep on track. Although this one I have been dying to take out of the um, slow cooker. I cannot wait in here in all this mess. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up, and Steve is going to have a look at this. This is a all right. So it's a Chinese style, Asian style, pulled pork. Oh, did the steam go all over it? <laughs> Motioning to me, it's it got all steamy. All right, it's all good now. Okay, let me unplug this, that's always the key thing. Now, this has been um, cooking, maybe, oh, I unplugged the wrong way. Things that you do for TV that you normally wouldn't do yourself. All right, heavy. Bring it over here. Oh, the smell is gorgeous. Now, I have used Mongolian on this one. Um, so this is a gorgeous um, Mongolian-style, Asian-style pulled pork. Let me just get my recipe here. So, so it's a pork roast. Now I've used um, soy sauce. I use Bragg's aminos. Those of you who are in us in the U.S. know may know what I'm talking about. It's a non-gluten. Um, it's not quite. It's it tastes like soy, but it's it's actually a little bit better for you. So I've used Bragg's aminos or soy sauce, a light um, uh, low sodium soy sauce. I've used hoisin sauce. I found a gluten-free um, hoisin sauce, which was fantastic. Okay. Um, the oil as well, which is fantastic. Um, ketchup, I didn't use. <laughs> I used tomato paste. I found that um, with the sweetness, um, I used honey instead. So I found some uh, raw, unfiltered honey from Florida, uh, about three tablespoons of that one in there. And, um, in, and, and then I used the um, toasted sesame as well. So that all just goes, you just mix it in a bowl, a separate bowl, just whisk it up, um, and you create your wonderful sauce. Um, then um, what you do is you marinate it um, 
I used a um, large freezer bag, put it all in together, um, and marinated. But the secret ingredient, wherever it is, um, five spice. Um, what I would do there is add garlic um, if you're only using the Chinese spice spice. But this has beautiful herbs in it. So then what you do is, I'm going to get my pan. Now it just falls off the bone, so I don't want the bone for this. I do want the meat. So you notice I have two work with this. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Um, mm. You know, I forgot to eat earlier. <laughs> and my stomach is going to growl the entire time. Now, I want to make a little bit of sauce with this. So um, you can thicken it if you want. Um, what I've done is, uh, let me think, um, chicken stock. So I've added some chicken stock, so I've got a lovely um, broth as well. So I'm going to scoop a little bit of this broth right on here. Because you just don't want dry pulled pork. All right, let me get this out of the way. I'll run to this counter here. And what you do... Let's hope this works, but it's very much like what you do for um, chicken, If you, I was sorry, duck, if you're doing Peking duck, um, but you're doing pork instead. So you're just going to um, pull it apart with two forks. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I can stand this. Um, I hope that you're all um, starving and um, at home right now and looking at this going, wow, I can't wait to get this recipe. <laughs> All right, so that's it. That's how you do a pulled pork, um, Mongolian or Asian style, whichever um, of the two that you want to do. How gorgeous is that? Okay, now let's see if I'm going to burn my mouth to taste it. Mm. Mm. The sweetness of that honey with the Mongolian dip mix, what a hit, what a hit. Something a little different. Mm. Yum. All right, we're going to put this over on our table. We are going to eat well tonight. Mm -hmm. And our dip mix. All right. I hope you all enjoy that. Oh, I think you caught me having another drink. Mm. What are we going to do next? I is let's do the jambalaya. Jambalaya is something that I have been eating um, and enjoying for years. When I was a national track athlete for Canada, I threw javelin. One of the um, things that our coach used to do is just give us a recipe book designed for athletes and said, here you go, you're going to train this long, you need to be eating healthy, natural, um, without the sugars, the salts, the white flours, uh, every, nothing in a box. We had to cook, cook right from scratch. One of the first spice blends I've ever made in my life was a Louisiana Creole spice, um, which is the inspiration for our Louisiana Creole spice. Now ours has a lot more ingredients in there because I've gotten more Mm, lazy in my cooking and I wanted to include more of those ingredients of the um, recipe. So Louisiana um, jambalayas is one of my favorite things. Very, very healthy um, for athletes. Well, for everyone, but that was my, my grounding in that. All right. So we're just going to move over here and I'm going to talk about it. Let's have a look at this. One of the things when you're doing slow cooking, I know it's so hard because on it, and if you're cooking over the stove, you get to lift the lid. Um, oh, wrong one. There we go. That's good. Be sad. I'm just telling you what you should not do, and I've just done it. 
um, there we go, um, is lifting the lid too many times. You lift the lid once, um, and that creates an extra half hour cooking time. So um, you really don't want to be lifting the lids on your um, on your meals when you're when you're using this low cooker. You just got to trust it and let it go. So um, again, I'm lazy. A lot of um, uh, a lot of jambalayas are going to tell you to pre-cook the rice or buy instant rice or all of that. You know what? Um, as an athlete, I don't want to stand around um, and cook like that. So I created some ways to make it um, much easier. So this one is um, you take your canned tomatoes, really easy. Throw those in. Um, some celery. You got to have celery in it. Um, and you can put some peppers. I don't like green peppers, so um, it's just you know, very few things I don't really care for, and green peppers is one, so I've used yellow peppers. Um, and then uh, some chicken, and just, you know, you can, you can if you want to, um, quickly pan fry that, get it a nice brown, um, golden brown, and then put it in there. Um, onions, or you don't need to put the onions in as well because um, the Louisiana Creole has the onions in already. Again, everything is just toss it in once you've um, uh, cooked, uh, not cooked the chicken, just ground it. Toss it in the slow cooker with some prawns and um, a couple of tablespoons of Louisiana Creole. And that is really how easy it is. Now, I've also put some sausage in there. You can use whatever type of spicy sausage um, that you'd like. Um, I've used a, a turkey kielbasa. Um, but you can use andouille or you can use Australia. I think that's an easy one for people to find there. So that is it. Um, it is so great the next day. Um, one of my favorite quick and easy one pot meals. Remember, one pot meals is uh, really important, um, you know, at, when you're busy. <laughs> and I'm really busy. Um, so that is a jambalaya. Really takes nothing at all to prepare. You're just going to cut up your vegetables, throw everything in one pot, and um, walk away. Now, I've cooked that one at, um, I think it's, you know, you can do it, what I found is that when I'm doing the slow cooking, you can, if you really want to do it fast, you can put it on high and cut your time by half. Um, or if you want that really lovely slow um, cook, like you saw with the um, pork roast, and it falls right off the bone. That's a long cook um, at low temperature. That was about almost eight hours um, there to cook that one. So with the jambalaya, I've, um, I've often done it on the pot when I'm very um, hungry and want something right away. If I plan ahead, it's about four hours uh, in the slow cooker. And again, you're gonna get the recipes and exactly what to do, when to do it um, on, your, on the website. 15 minutes. How many have we done? All right. The next one, which I am, that's the one I opened. Let's go right to that one because uh, that is fantastic. The word tajdeen scares people. Um, and uh, people, you know, get this, oh, I can't do a tajdeen because I don't have a tajdeen. Tajdeen is only the style of cooking. The pot has been named after the style of cooking. Um, I just need to hang on. I forgot to bring my spoon. I'll use this. Um, the, the pot has been named after the style of cooking, but um, which is a you know the the conical pot uh, there, but you can easily do it in a slow cooker. Really inconvenient here. So all this is is diced lamb and um, some chunks of, you know, roughly, roughly chopped onion, okay? Um, the Moroccan Marrakesh, look at that bubbling away, and it is done, so I'm gonna turn that off. And again, that is an eight hour. Now what I did um, to make it really quick is I put it on four hours at high and then two hours at low. So it is just absolutely beautiful and tender. So I'll tell you a little bit about how to cook that because it is 
you know, it is so complex. Okay, that's my sarcasm for tonight. Um, it really is just dice the lamb. Um, use the one of these instead of, um, I think that one probably has about 12 different spices in it. And uh, let me just find, oh, and what I did is I added apricots. I love a little bit of sweetness in there. Now these are um, wild apricots grown by small farmers. So that's really cool. Um, and of course they're unsulfured. As so those of you who know me, I don't do um, sulfured uh, anything. So we are, this is what an unsulfured apricot looks like. Um, and um, so I throw those in some chicken stock as well, and or you could use beef stock if you want, either one. Um, and you just that's it. That's how easy it is. And I was being very sarcastic about um, how to prepare it, but it is simply just throwing it all in there together. Let the slow cooker work it. Um, I did grate some uh, lemon because um, with. Uh, Middle Eastern food, they have that lovely little lemon zest in there. Or um, you'll know that baharat is one of our other favorite Middle Eastern spices, and it is great um, because it has the lemon lumi, which is Persian black lime already in it. So it gives you that really tart flavor. So you could use baharat, um, you could use a Moroccan couscous um, blend, or Arabic or um, the Moroccan Marrakesh. Now, of course, to serve that, you would um, put it on a bed of couscous. You could use the pearl couscous, or you could use the um, more French style um, little beaded uh, couscous as well. All right, so favorite, favorite, favorite with all of those aromatics going through the house. So can't wait. I don't know which one I'm gonna have tonight. <laughs> all right, how many more? We have 12 minutes. Let's see what else we can get through here. How about we go to the Caribbean? All right. Um, now we have done, let's come on over here and you can see the Caribbean. Now this can be done with pork. I've done this one with chicken. And basically it's almost a little curry, um, you know, very um, mild, not too hot. I've used our Bridgetown grill and um, peppers. Uh, so I've used red peppers, green onions or spring onions, um, chunks of chicken. Now what's the unusual ingredient in this one is peanut butter. And now I use a dry, uh, dry peanut butter, but you can use a regular peanut butter as well. Um, and just blend it all in. Again, nothing too, um, too dramatic here. What I did do, of course, was brown off the chicken. Um, brown off the chicken there. And, um, and with some olive oil, I'll throw in the bell peppers, green onions, and um, I added some hoisin sauce and um, some soy sauce as well to go with the peanut butter. So what other product could you use really well with this one? And that's our Thai satay. So if you wanted to create this, the same um, ingredients, but all I wanted to do is substitute to make a Thai, this is how quick and easy it is with your inspiration at home. Same ingredients, and the only substitution is instead of um, a more Mexican or um, plain olive oil or oil to um, fry off and, and brown the chicken, is substitute with our Thai oil, brown the chicken there, um, the peanut butter, the hoisin sauce, the soy sauce, and then add um, the Thai satay, uh, and um, then put it in the crock pot there, and it is um, beautiful. So with um, grill rub, okay, so you don't want to add any more salt. This is quite salty. Um, you would salt to taste if you were using the Thai. Okay, so a, a, a very basic row of Thai, whichever one you're feeling like um, at the moment. And of course, serving on a bed of rice. Um, and if you are so inclined to make dirty rice, which is a very, and um, then you can serve it on that as well. All right, and I haven't tried it, and I'm thinking, I wonder how it will go with the jerk seasoning. But um, I, would, I would probably give that one a try as well. Rendang. 
All right, let me do a rendang. I think I have time to show this one, so I'm gonna use the small crock pot here. Oh no, I'm gonna use the big one. There it is, or medium size. This is a, the small one is one and a half quart. This one is a um, two and a half quart. Um, so we should be able to do the rendang. Now, this one's off the top of my head, so I'm going to have to um, write down the recipe after I do it. <laughs> so it is a beef rendang. Now, I want to put this in the pot, in the pan, just to brown off a little bit. So I'm going to put it on to, you want to come over here, Stephen. I'm going to put a little oil in the pan. And I'm going to put it on to medium high heat. Okay, so I've used a fairly fatty cut, which is what you want in a stew. Get the flavors through it. didn't have the pan hot, so you have to bear with me here. So I'm just going to blend those together, and then I'm going to sprinkle the rendang on top. Now, if you want to, you can flour this as well. Um, easy to do. Um, just put some flour in there. So I'm just going to brown this up. And then what I'm doing is about two tablespoons of the rendang. Now, the rendang has... Um, is interesting. A lot of people call it Malaysian rendang, but it actually was um, um, started, so the, the dish comes from Indonesia, um, but it is now um, a Sumatra and um, Malaysia favorite. So um, my favorite um, rendang was actually in uh, Malaysia at Kuala Lumpur, and this is where this particular product um, was inspired from when I trip to um, Malaysia. So you're just going to brown this off. You're going to add some stock uh, when it goes into the crock pot. Uh, sorry, a li little bit of stock, not too much. You can, you can actually put it in the browning here. But the, the uh, favorite ingredient, of course, is coconut milk. Um, that goes in after you brown this off. So that will take a couple of minutes here um, to do that. So I'm just going to turn this down because we're running out of time. And I just want to show you how easy that is. All right. Okay, come on over here. <laughs> so then what you would do is just throw the coconut milk, or you can use a cream or a light coconut milk, just really depends on how thick you want it to go. Um, stir that all in together, and then just put it in the crock pot, and I'll give you the time there. Now, you can also do this one on the stove, and of course the thing about a rendang is getting it nice and thick um, and coated the, coating the beef. And it's typically beef, but you can do chicken as well. All right, let's have a look at the rendang. Actually, no, you know what? We've only got time now to do our dessert, so um, I'm going to get through them all. I'm going to get through them all. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about these. Um, now, I didn't, you know, desserts have never been my thing in a crock pot, um, but what I love is rice pudding. Now this is a rice pudding, but it's rum raisin with pumpkin um, pie spice. And um, um, it is not your typical rice that you would use in a, in a um, rice pudding. I, instead of long grain white rice, I've used um, arborio rice. So it's nice and thick um, and absolutely gorgeous there. <laughs> All right. The other thing that I've done, which is really fun, is um, 
I've done a tiramisu bread pudding. Now I will top this with uh, mascarpone cheese um, whipped with creme fraiche and um, you put your favorite chocolate powder on that. So I'm going to use chocolate burgundy. The chocolate um, orange would be gorgeous on this one as well. Now for the um, tiramisu part, what I did was um, I made a, um, a sugar base with um, um, instead of the normal, they always say use the um, what's the word? Fake coffee? Instant, instant coffee. <laughs> I'm so not an instant coffee drinker. But I made Turkish coffee today and so which is lovely um, thick coffee so I've done Turkish coffee on the stove with our Turkish coffee blend um, and instead of using the granulated coffee so use um, I used uh, probably about a third cup sugar um, and chopped it up with our vanilla sugar okay and um, then the coffee and that forms the base of this now I've done um, you can use um, um, cream or coconut cream. Um, even in the drink that I made earlier, I did one version with cream and the butter and the sugar and one version with coconut um, cream, the butter and the sugar, because I'm somebody who doesn't eat a lot of dairy. So um, that is a great alternative there. Then I uh, made little baguettes. Well, I didn't make them. I cooked them, baked them. Um, there, just slice them up, but you can use um, uh, French bread cut into uh, one inch cubes, um, then put mix those in all together in a bowl, like gently because you don't want to mash the bread. Toss it into your um, crock pot and cook that for a couple of hours, and it really steams that bread nice and soft. And then, of course, you top it with the French, um, the chocolate. Um, whichever your favorite chocolate is. There, so I think I have covered all of them, have I? Did I miss anything? Well, you wouldn't know. Um, I think I got them all. So, one minute to spare. <laughs> I would have loved to show, to have shown you each and every one, um, but of course we're out of time. You've had a chance to see and hear about them. And again, our specials, let me go through those. And I'm gonna get a chance to eat them all tonight. So the special number one was the Louisiana Creole Dip Mix, the Indonesian Rendang, um, the Capsicum Pesto, all at 25% off for that pack. The second pack, the Fajita Spice Blend, the Mulling Spice, which was in that um, fabulous drink, and the Pumpkin Pie Spice, which was in the Rum Raisin um, Rice Pudding. Then we have uh, the Mongolian dip mix in pack number three, the Marrakesh um, Bazaar, and the vanilla sugar. Take advantage of the 25% discount, but you also get um, the 50% off as your host only special. For those of you joining, take advantage of the great business kit and the executive kit and get one of those packs for free. Well, thank you everyone and watch for this and for guests. Your consultant will be happy to email them. They will be posted on our web pages and Facebook as well. So bye everyone. Have a great rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Bye for now.